Well, hello, this is Killian. I am the Mathematic Plumber, and welcome to video 5 of the wet venting series. In today's video, we're going to talk about sizing the continuous vent. All code references will be made from the 2050 National Plumbing Code of Canada. This video assumes you already have prior knowledge of plumbing code interpretation and sizing of drains and vents. And for those of you new to this topic, no problem, I have two video series, Basic Drainage Waste and Venting and Level 2 Drainage Waste and Venting. The continuous vent is a vent that serves a wet vented system. In this picture right here, we have a continuous vent that's serving a bathroom group. It starts at this point right here, which is the highest point of the wet vent, and it's going to go to outside air. We need to know two important pieces of information to size up a continuous vent. The first thing we need to know is the fixture unit load, and the second thing will be the developed length of the vent. When I'm counting the fixture unit load for a continuous vent, I need to count every fixture unit that is served by the wet vent. That is the lav, the tub, and the water closet. Funny situation here. For the fixed unit load, we can have more than one different answer. We could go look at table 2493 under bathroom group with a flush tank, and it would say, hey, that's six fixed units in total. I can also go and add up all the fixtures individually, and it'll be 6.5 fixture units. So for the time being, we're just going to stick with bathroom group. We're going to say the continuous vent is serving six fixture units. For the develop length, we need to look at clause 2583 number 5. For the purposes of table 2583, the length of a continuous vent shall be its developed length from the vertical solar waste pipe connection to a vent stack, stack vent, vent header, or outside air. And to simplify that a bit, I'm going to start my measurement at the highest point of the wet vent, which is right here, and I'm going to measure to one of my three major vents, or outside air, whatever is closest. In this example, I'm going to measure from this point out to outside air, and I'm going to pretend that that is 6 meters. Now I'm going to go look at table 2583, and I've already discussed how to use this table in great detail in other videos, so I'm not going to do that again. Let's just look up our size. I require 6 fixture units, so I come down on the left hand side until I get to 8, and then I come across to the right. It says that I can have a 1 and a quarter inch vent pipe with 9 meters of developed length. Well, I only have six, so this should be good, except I need to check a very special table called 2571. Table 2571 tells us the minimum size of vent pipe based on size of trap served. So what I need to do is look in my bathroom group and find the largest trap, which is the three inch water closet. And I need to go compare that to this table and ensure I have a big enough vent. I go down to three inches, I come across to the right, and the minimum size of vent pipe that I'm permitted is one and a half inches. Therefore, for this system, I require a one and a half inch continuous vent. Now for our next example, we have a system that is considerably more complicated, and we have a special code clause that we need to follow. Clause 25211G. The hydraulic load of separately vented fixtures that drain into the wet vent are not included when sizing the continuous vent that serves the wet vent. So what this clause tells me is when I'm counting the fixture unit load for the continuous vent, which is right here, I will not include fixture units from this individual vent over here, or any fixture unit load from this dual vent over here, because both these things have their own vents. They're vented already. So when I count the fixture unit load for my continuous vent, I need to count any fixtures that are solely served by the wet vent. So what we have here is one lav, that is one fixture unit right here. I have a shower that has two heads for three fixture units right here. We're at four fixture units total. And I have a flush tank water closet that is also four fixture units. And that makes eight fixture units total. That's what I need to use to size my continuous vent. My develop length will be 10 meters and that goes from the top of the wet vent all the way until I meet up with a stack vent, but you can't see that. I reference table 2583. I come down on the left hand side until I get to eight fixture units. I move across to the right. One and a quarter inch pipe is only good to nine meters of developed length. So I need to move over to the right one more to one and a half inch continuous vent and that's good to 30 meters. That will be the size of my continuous vent. Of course, I need to check table 2571 based on size of largest trap served, which is the three inch water closet. So the minimum size will still be one and a half inches. And that brings us to the end of this video. But stay tuned for the next video, which is the conclusion of the wet venting series, where we get into multi-story wet venting. 
And until that time, you have yourself a ridiculously good day.